Risks. Our brain is hardwired to avoid them. But without taking risks, we'll never be able to step into who we're meant to be and experience the richness life has to offer. In this episode, we'll explore why comfort zones destroy our spirit and how not taking a risk is a risk in itself. We share our personal stories along with practical tips in the hope they encourage and inspire you to take even a little leap of faith. Hi, I'm James Davis. And I'm Claire Davis. We're the Midlife Mentors, here to lift the lid on how to achieve health and happiness. The balanced, no-nonsense way. life mentors how are you doing so we are coming to you well obviously it won't be live but uh, we're coming to you from marbella <laughs> it's live for you live, live for you is. so uh, just to set the scene uh, we're here to run one of our retreats we're relaxing on our balcony as the sun shines down through palm trees in the yeah. semi-tropical forest of the Punta Romano yet? resort are you jealous yet um because i'll tell you what one of the little British factoids for you. It's been the wettest February in the UK for 150 years. So quite pleased to get on the plane this morning, to be honest, and leave it all behind. Uh, and us being us, of course, we got up uh, very, very early this morning, got the plane, got here, and we went straight to the gym and smashed a really hard workout. Because <laughs> we love to move our bodies and stay healthy. Yeah, yeah, but really like sluggish after the plane. And actually some of the people that... Now I feel like our family, the staff here, they're so lovely. And they were like, you've just arrived. Why are you working out? You're, you're on holiday. And we're like, no, we're not really. We're working and, you know, we do probably need to get a life. Although after this, we will um, shower because we are a bit smelly. I'm not smelling. I smell of roses. <laughs> and uh, we'll take a little promenade along the beach. Maybe promenade. have a cheeky glass of wine. But I could not convince Claire to do the traditional British start of holiday of eight pints at Weatherspoons <laughs> in the airport <laughs> at five in the morning. <laughs> James, you'd only be able to handle half. That's true, true story, <laughs> true story. Um, guys, we're really excited to talk to you about this today. Um, we're going to talk to you about risks. And I think the reason, well, there's a few reasons, but it's twofold. One is we are currently in our lives, and actually pretty much are all the time since we've been together and before that. We are... The type of people that do take a lot of risks, in comparison to everyone else's life, we probably uh, seem like we take a lot of risks. And at the moment, currently, we are about to launch something really, really exciting that we have been working on for a long time. And Just just because being co-authors on a book and launching a podcast and deciding to, to gravitate to moving more time in London and launch Corporate Wellness cool, yeah. and start servicing corporate clients that are at... Uh, as well else? as running our assisting retreat business and coaching individual <laughs> clients, wasn't enough. We thought, no, we'll launch something else as well. No, no, it's not that. What we'll do, we'll uh, launch something else. That's what we'll do. So, uh, you know, we've, ta- we've taken a big financial risk um, and we have, yeah, risked actually putting ourselves away from other elements of our business, truth be told, and focusing on this. And also, yeah, just everything's gone by the wayside for this thing, but we believe in it so much that um, it's going to be worth it, and we're so excited in a couple of weeks to be putting it out into the world so we can help more people. So that's one of the reasons we are taking huge risks, as always. And, I, and also, at midlife, I've said this before in some of the other podcasts, if you haven't listened to them all, go back and listen. Um, but we have said, you know, as, as we progress in life, we become more risk adverse, and We've said that, you know, we used to play to win as we were growing up in our 20s and 30s. And now we play not to lose because we've started to define ourselves with all the things that we have accumulated and all the status and, you know, our own self-identity. Mm. And listen, like, uh, just to make it clear at the start, we make, make a difference here. This is about um, calculated risks or educated <laughs> risks you take to move your life forward, not the kind of like adrenaline of, oh, I wonder what would happen if I... Don't turn up to work for a week and and go bodyboarding in Maui. 
without telling anyone. <laughs> Jones with, has done that. With <laughs> raw meat tied to my ankle to see if a shark attacks. Not that type of risk. Oh my god. <laughs> this is why I'm terrified of James's mind sometimes. I'm like, I don't even want a, an insight. No one wants an insight to that, James. No one wants an insight to that. So about calculated risk me before, and actually, it's made me think, just sitting here now reflecting, you know, I painted that scene at the start of us sitting on the balcony here, and we're so fortunate. But it's a result of risks that Claire and I have mm. both taken, like, individually and together. You know, I took a massive risk to walk away from a corporate job and move to Ibiza and set up a fitness business. Claire took a massive risk on moving out to Ibiza, moving out to Ibiza and joining me. And we took a massive risk on, on, on launching in Marbella as well when we had something good going in Ibiza. But, um, you yeah, know, those are risks that have paid off for us. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think, you know, you know, what, why are we talking about risk as well is because, you know, as, as we get older, we do define ourselves by the things that we have around us um, and the things that we think about ourselves and it, it's quite difficult to imagine um, our lives being any different but unless we this is where boredom comes from this is where apathy and just getting stuck in a rut where you feel like you're on a hamster wheel it is genuinely because you are you are not moving yourself forward it's because you're not taking risks um and what we're saying here is like risks when you don't know the outcome that's what a risk is to us where you cannot calculate and 100 percent no not even necessarily five percent no what the outcome is going to be but you still go for it and you still take the risk and we see this time and time again with clients you know that they, they are stuck because yeah they're not moving forward by stepping into the unknown mm. at all um and that's you know that's no way to live and we know that and that's why we're talking about risk today and we we want to kind of soothe you into understanding why it, it's a good thing to take risks guys and open yourself up to a whole new world and a whole new self yeah i mean as human beings we're designed to grow and you know we grow when we push our boundaries i'm not sure mm. who said it but they said like uh the most dangerous thing on this world is i think they said routine mm. well there's another one version of that that's like being comfortable yeah it's being comfortable makes you stop growing growing and striving for more when you're comfortable listen i don't know from personal experience when you are down and out in a really bad situation, you are going to go. You are going to grow because you want to get yourself out of that. Mm. Uh, when you're flying, it becomes kind of addictive, and you want to carry on chasing that. The most dangerous thing is being stuck in the middle, like comfortable. Everything is comfortable. You've got no real worries. Mm. Everything is easy. It's just like kind of like oh, you don't want to sit back, but you're not fussed about going forward. And that, that's I get it. It's comforting. Mm. It's like having like a nice warm, fluffy blanket around you. But but there's that niggling feeling. And you might know what we're talking about here. There's that niggling feeling of apathy and boredom. Mm. So, don't worry too much because um, advances in brain imaging a technology has actually shown that humans are hardwired to be risk averse. We are, of course we are. Our ancestors um, took many risks. They'd go out on the plains of Africa and there was a risks here, there and everywhere. And obviously they're like, I'm not going to keep putting myself in that situation over and over again. We are hardwired as humans to try and look after ourselves and protect ourselves. Yeah, we? exactly that. We are. It's an evolutionary trait. Uh, you could argue that you know, uh, risk is actually being being bred out of the human race. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, the sensible ones survive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, dear God. <laughs> that doesn't hold up much hope for us, does it? Um, no, no, so, no, I don't mean that in a negative way. No, though. I know. Because if we look at all the advances that have been made, essentially, if you look in any field, yes. it's people willing to take a risk. People yeah. going, I don't accept the status quo here. There needs to be another way of doing this or something else that we can achieve from it. Absolutely. And we'll dig into some of those a little bit um, later. I think as a society as well, we've become um, very addicted to conformity and group thinking. Mm. You know, with the rise of social media and the impact it has on our lives, um, everyone wants to be the same. Or not necessarily even wants to be the same. You don't even know you're wanting to be the same. But going outside the status quo um, and opening our mouths and saying something different it actually seems scarier now because it's so on the world scale, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, one thing I would say, us Generation Xers, us midlifers, 
we also grew up with baby boomer parents mm. and that's another huge impact on our generation don't you think yeah psychologically it's fascinating so we can understand you know the, the, and these are stereotypes so we don't want to go too much about them but you know baby boomers are, are very risk averse they've done very well out of the economic stability and growth <laughs> post stability. two world wars but of course the reason they were risk averse was that they grew up in a very uncertain and fast changing world you know their parents had known the two most destructive wars mm. on the planet um, the Great Depression. So, of course, they were hardwired in to like seek security and safety from that psychological experience. Uh, it'd be really interesting to see what the generations coming after us, what I their know. experience is. But for us Gen Xers, we, we've had to deal with the kind of state of flux. You know, the, as as we hit the job market, that whole idea of a job for life was gone. Yeah, we're seeing the the digital age come. You know, um, I think they're reading something today, weren't we? That you know. Our generation is probably a generation that remembers like computer schools oh, didn't have computers, or you had like a computer lab with like a few machines sat there, and you're trying to learn coding at best. Yeah. And if we look how the world is now, we're not talking that long a time. You know, like d- digital is integrated into everything. You've got guys, smart fridges, smart vacuum like cleaners. You think about this, guys. This is what I was writing a post on it. This is where this came from. It's actually my post, James. I was reading you my post. Um, it was, you know, let's really think about this. We are the last generation that, that didn't know digital. That didn't know digital. Let's just like think about that. There'll be no other generation after us that remembers a time of non-digital. I'll tell you what, Claire. Thank goodness there were no camera phones in the 90s. <laughs> you and your race. Oh. Many memories, no evidence. No evidence. <laughs> I love that quote. So let's just dive a little bit deeper because we are going to share some of our own stories um, of you know what our experience around risk has been. But let's just think about some of the main reasons for not risking. We've touched on some of them. There's main, there's four main reasons that we don't like to take risks, um, and that's what well, the number one is. We overestimate the probability of something going wrong, um, in the sense that we use our imagination negatively. So imagination is is our most powerful gift. It's like a magic gift. Okay, everything that we now see, other than the natural world, was once imagined in someone's mind. So it can be used for the most creative, amazing, powerful things that change the world. We can also use our imagination in a really negative way that pulls ourselves down. We're basically looking at the worst case scenarios. And that is kind of what we seem to be hardwired to be doing a lot these days. You know, this constant fear factor. You know, um, whatever you think about the coronavirus, um, you know, the media, the press... There is an enormous ara- amount of fear around it. Um, and we're using like our imaginations almost to imagine the worst case scenarios. What if this? What if that? What if this? And although that has its part to play sometimes, we've got a wasp that's just come. Yeah, that's spe- Hello, speaking waspy. of risks, a massive wasp has just Hello. flown out to No, I don't mind wasps. Uh, he's no, right. it'll, it'll go in a minute. But yeah, we're using our imagination um, a lot of the time when we're thinking about wanting to do something. And we imagine the worst case scenario. So it actually completely halts us in our tracks. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, as Claire said, as human beings, we're hardwired into that. It's a survival thing. Like, you know, or what's the worst case scenario? The trouble is a lot of us then let our imagination run away with that worst case scenario when it's not actually that rational or, or probably that likely. Yeah. Uh, and there, from there, we tend to exaggerate the consequences of it going wrong, you know. Uh, you know and we've all done this, all experiences, think, you know, oh, if that thing's happened, and you kind of like go to the logical thing that would happen as a result, and then before you know it, you've gone off on some fairy tale <laughs> you've concocted to yourself. Where I know, and we all do it. We've all done it. So you know, number one is overestimating the probability of something going wrong, and in turn exaggerating the consequences of it going wrong. And the third one is we underestimate our ability to handle it if we take a risk and it doesn't work. You know, we really don't give ourselves credit for, you know, taking those steps forward because we just don't believe in ourselves. We don't have like that trust in ourselves that we actually handle it if it doesn't, if it doesn't work. I think that's a toughie. You know what? I think that only comes from experience. So I'm thinking of a uh, very good friend of mine who has um, worked at a number of things and started a number of businesses. And, you know, I'm sure he would be the first to admit that he basically had shocker after shocker, like various <laughs> things went wrong, like most of them not not in his control or his fault, that it, you know, it was failed business after failed business. Now he is hugely successful, it's like amazing. internationally successful. But that is off the off the back of 
you know, him taking risks and learning. So, you know, and here's, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. Some risks we take pay off. Some risks we yeah. do do go wrong. But yeah. the thing is, when they go wrong, you learn from that. And it helps you build resilience. And my point here about my friend is, you know, probably he wouldn't be where he is now doing what he's doing if he hadn't had those Absolutely. failures before. But then that's also educating him into, like, taking risks yeah, has has a payoff down the well, line. Well, they say, don't they? And I know we'll tell our story, and we're, we're starting to tell our story a lot more, even through these podcasts. But you know, they say, "Oh, yeah, it was a twenty-year overnight success." You know, it's it's all that stuff that's going on under the surface, all the failures, all the dark times, all the crying, all the uh, wanting to quit and give up. Like we've been there at points, we're still there, um, and you know, we keep trucking on because we know there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and we have these people in our world, thankfully, that are shining beacons of light going, okay, <laughs> it was years of trial and error. Um, and now I'm finally here and we always believe that we're going to make it. So I think that's the most important thing. Mm. Always. Always. Um, and the last one is we discount, this is really important, this guys. Is massive. This we one, massive. discount the cost of staying where you are. So you're, if you're sitting there listening to this, you're discounting the cost of staying where you are if you don't take that step forward and you don't take that quote unquote risk. You know, you, yeah, it's, it's, we bury our head in the sand basically and we take, we make excuses for not taking those risks. Um, but if you look back, it's probably got worse over time. So there's something that, you know, you might have always been wanting to go after, but the risk, all those reasons have really been holding you back. But if you look back, actually, over six months, a year, three years, it could be way longer, it's probably actually getting worse for you over time. So that's what we're saying. You're discounting the cost of staying where you are. It's really, really costing you a lot. Mm. I think I'm going to give you two illuminations on this point. So the first one is, like we talked about before, like just being comfortable. And that's a really dangerous place to be. So the comfort, and that's when you start to playing not to lose rather than yeah. playing to win but the other one that you know i've i've certainly seen i know you have claire is people actually being deeply unhappy in the situation they're in yeah. but that that unhappiness becomes comfortable in a way and mm. and in their heads they imagine the risk the risk of changing it is too great but it's just, they're not looking at the opportunity cost i.e the cost now of how miserable they are and how yeah. miserable their current situation is mm. so be really, really aware of that. I mean, uh, it's a it's a big one, and we get it a lot with our clients. So they want to make changes, but they're not really accepting like the cost of not changing is greater than, well, than taking the risk to change. I'll give you an example in my life. No, James has given an example of himself and also a close friend of ours. But you know, one of um, the stories I tell about myself is trying to get out of PR for such a long time, and I would put a, a step forward and I would do something and take almost like a quarter risk. <laughs> so I'd dip my toes in something, freak out, um, mainly kind of around money and security, um, you know, I had my own mortgage and everything, and then I would just retreat. And the thing is, that was costing me. That did cost me time. That did cost me time. Everything happens for a reason. I genuinely believe that. Everything unfolds in exactly the right time. But it did cost me time and energy where I had to keep restarting over and over and over again until I was fully, fully ready to take the risk. And here's the thing, we're never fully ready to take the risk, guys, ever, ever. You have to jump. You have to jump and just see where it takes you because you're never, there's going to be no right time and you're never going to be ready. So it was costing me, you know, my, my happiness, my goodness, my self-worth. You know, every time I dipped my toe in and retreated, I I just lost my confidence. So yeah, that was one of my costs from a story of not taking uh, taking a risk and then retreating. Mm. Oh, I think uh, something that's worth note there, Claire. I've seen this as well a lot. Is is people want to take the risk, but they're afraid of taking the risk, so they kind of half take the risk. Well, that's what I was doing. They dabble. Yeah, they dabble. And here's the thing: like, um, can't dabble. I think a lot of coaches will tell you, like, <laughs> oh yeah, have have a plan, plan B, definitely, or, or you know, try this thing for a bit and see how it works out. You know, with like minimal investment of your yeah. time and money, which I get it. It's the sensible approach. But my my personal experience and people that I have seen 100%. is like, you need to be all in on something. Like, if you're going to take that risk, then properly take it. I love that. Yeah. I absolutely love that you said that. And that's exactly where, you know, 
anyone that knows me that listens to this podcast, I went all in with James. I mean, I gave up my my flat, I rented out my flat. I um, gave up my job in Surrey. I put myself into this relationship when it was really difficult and some people had serious doubts from both of our sides about whether mm. it was ever going to work and I went all in, as did James. I moved over to Ibiza. Um, that I totally, you know, it's not like I had a plan B. I didn't have another James sitting there because um, there is no other James. But, you know, it's, it's so true what you said. You have to go all in. You can't... I dabbled, you know, with so many risks for about 14 years, guys. And I, yeah, absolutely beautiful what you just said. Mm, it's true. It's true. So, why should we take risks? We kind of covered some of this stuff, but massively boosts confidence. Listen, guys, every risk I've ever taken, ever, ever taken, I have had my confidence boost from it. We are taking huge risks now. You know, even when I do a live, when I first started doing lives on my Facebook page, it was a risk. I felt scared. You know, putting myself out there. We're taking, you know, risks all the time. And I am building confidence piece by piece. And I know you won't all necessarily believe this, but... You know, that confidence isn't innately in me. You have to go out and start cultivating it. So, you know, the, then there's a feedback loop. And you're like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. that worked out all right. I can do that again. Yeah, by taking a risk, you know, by default, we are pushing our boundaries of what of what we're comfortable with. I don't like the word comfort zone, but we're pushing our boundaries. So every time we do that, we're extending them a little further, a little further, a little further, which is, like, you know, expanding our boundary field, making us more confident. You know, and whether we get success or failure from the risk, we're getting a feedback loop on that as well. Absolutely, and on that, it makes us feel alive. We're supposed to feel alive, people. We're supposed to celebrate life. You know, it's we're here to evolve. We're not here to just be bored. So it makes us feel alive. We also learn from everything that we do. Everything that's ever happened to us, we've learned from. Um, and when you take a risk... It takes you on a new path that you might not have thought about before. Again, I know this has happened to me. I've taken a risk and there's been a fork in the road and it's taken me somewhere completely different that I wouldn't have even dreamed of. Um, we think we have it all figured out and, you know, we're really rigid in our pra- plans. But by taking risk and taking a step forward into the unknown, it unfolds like a whole magical world that you haven't even thought about. True. I mean, I was going to throw some stuff out there. So I'm just thinking off the top of my head now, you know, people have taken risks and we all accept them now. And looking back, the crazy thing is when you look at risks that pay off in a big way, they don't seem risky. You know, the Wright brothers, people pretty much believed there was impossible for an aircraft that was heavier than air, i.e. not a balloon, to fly. Yet they did it. And look, look at the world of aviation we have now. Someone like Nikola Tesla genius but he could have just sat there and done done nothing or, or made a load of money like making something that, that people needed but he was always like what Innovative. how can I be innovate and create even look at like you know Edison on the other side of the coin with, with the light but he could have just given up oh let's keep with yeah. candles or gas lamps you know people took risks Edison risked Edison was risking when he did this and you know every great achievement has been a risk of some sort in, in human endeavour absolutely and get that piece around creativity we're supposed to be creative beings we're supposed to move forward we're not supposed to stand still um also on that success doesn't just fall in your lap guys it's not gonna you're not gonna find success or fulfillment by sitting there watching love island or scrolling through instagram or watching the news all the time and obsessing over things you know you have to pursue your dream and you have to believe that it's possible. And that does mean going and taking a risk. Um, it also stops us fearing failure. Mm. So here's the thing. When you take a risk and it doesn't work out, and trust me, I have had plenty, so has James. When you fail and you're on the floor and you get back up again, somehow, and you're doing a dark, dark night of the soul, you do start trusting that things work out for your good Things work out for your good. And that actually, whether you're religious or not, there is a higher force looking after you that's got your back. Um, And in fact, in our our experience, failure isn't the end of the success at all. It's actually the very beginning. Because you grow, you move, you expand. And then you can help others do exactly the same. Exactly. I mean, I say failure is horrible. Failure is horrible. Oh, it's disgusting. But failure is only failure if you don't learn from it. Yeah. So, you know, just regard every failure as a, as a lesson. Yeah. Uh, and get something from it. I also think, um, I was re- I'm obsessing over Russell Brunson at the moment, who's a marketing guru, and he said something in a podcast I listened to today on the plane, and he was basically saying that um, actually every part of your journey is getting you ready for what you're supposed to do on this planet. 
Well, I must say, I believe it was Churchill that said, show, show me a man who hasn't failed and I'll show you a man who hasn't tried. Yeah. They're meaning it's like, you know, you if, as long as we, uh, when we're trying stuff, we, we're going to fail. It's it, for, for us, you know, we we've had loads of failures, even in our, our relationship together. And, you know, that's really hard because we're in it together and you have to keep picking yourself up. But it's building our resilience and our character and it's making us ready for our moment. It really is. Um, and that's what taking risks does. So. Tips. Tips, 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 tips. Um, always ending with some tips, guys. We really hope that's helpful, you know, just sharing some of our highs and lows of risks and stuff. Um, but we're always going to try and end up with some practical ways that you can start having a look at where you can take some calculated risks. But firstly, calculated. firstly working out where you're at. So. Gonna ask you a question. If you're sitting down, go and grab a pen and a paper and do this now. Because what we don't do now, we just get put off and then it gets sidelined and life happens, okay? So if you're not driving, (laughs) just uh, grab a piece of uh, paper and a pen and do this now. Ask yourself, if I was sure my risk would work out, how would I feel and behave? Say that again. If I was sure my risk would work out, how would I feel and behave? Really get into the the place, visualize it, like get into that total future pacing of that risk having totally worked out. That's question one. Okay, question two. In one year's time, what is the cost to my happiness, my bank account, my relationships, my children's lives, my health, my career, whatever, if I don't, don't take this risk? What is the cost to me if I don't take this risk? Be realistic with yourself, guys. Don't put sticky plasters on it. Don't go into denial. Be really honest. Look back and think about what it already has cost you and think about what the cost is if you do nothing about this in another year. Oh, this is deep stuff, in it? Oof. I like it. I like um, it. Oof. And finally, what small thing can I do in the next 48 hours, the emphasis is on a small thing I can do in the next 48 hours that will boost my confidence and take me a step towards taking an even bigger risk. Listen, guys, it's small steps. As James said, we're not saying, like, tie a bit of meat to you and swim with sharks. We're not saying put your house. We're, not, we're really not, because that's just... We, we, didn't, we really didn't need that inside. We're also saying don't put your house up for sale to go and pursue a dream if you've got two kids. And, we're not saying that. What we're saying is just start getting used to taking a few, like, steps forward outside, again, hate this word, but outside your comfort zone that makes you feel a bit, oh, edgy. Oh, that made me feel alive. Oh, that was fun. Just take a couple of those and start seeing. Get starts getting a little bit addictive. Yeah, I want to summarise by saying like, yeah, you'll know, you'll know whether you've got like like a nagging idea that's yes. a bit crazy. That actually, when you drill into it, you know what? That's not a great idea. <laughs> and we've all had them, you know. James, um, James still does these on a regular basis. God yeah, love yeah. him. And um, yeah, sometimes I'll follow them, and then halfway down the rabbit hole, I'm like. Whoa, hang on a minute. This is full of you haven't thought this one out, have you, matey? And it's like that. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> but speaking of experience and what we're I love work, that uh, about what, him. What we're working on now is you will have something that is just like does keep nagging away. It's like this is a thing yeah. I have to get out there in I the have world. This. Because it's gonna make me feel different, it's gonna make people I care about feel different. People I've never met, it's gonna make them feel different, it's gonna change people's lives. And you know that if you don't follow it. There's always going to be that, oh, what if, maybe I should have, what if, oh, what if I had done it? Wait, there's no certainty in this life. You know what? There's no certainty in this life. Certainty is, certainty is death. Yeah. Sorry to break to you, certainty is death. We all crave certainty it's the and death security. Of the soul. Death of the soul. You know, there is no certainty at all. So if there is something in you that you feel really strongly yeah. with, that you're emotionally connected to, then yeah, really do look at that. What the cost is if you don't if you don't follow it. Well, it's really interesting. Oprah Winfrey, um, I, I do love that lady. She said, you know, um, so it will come along. This thing that we're talking about here will come along. It will give a like little little tug at your heartstrings. It will get a little tug on the heartstrings. Don't laugh, James. Um, a little and you'll go. It's a little whispering of notice me. I sound like Gollum. Notice me. Notice me. It's asking you to notice it. And what most of us do, and I did this for 14 years, believe me, I know how this feels. I was like, no, 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 all right then, I'll listen to you a little bit. No, no, I'm too scared. 
And then what happens is that that knocking gets louder and louder and louder. And then all of a sudden, it's a frigging avalanche in your life and you cannot keep ignoring it. That's why we take risks. So little steps, start getting used to this because as James says, certainty is absolute death for the human soul and the human spirit. Exactly. Hey, listen, thank you for your time on this. And we would love to hear from you about what you're going to do with this. Yeah. Like any, any plans you have. I'm not going to use the word risk anymore. Any plans you've got, <laughs> uh, things you would like to do that now maybe you're thinking of considering. We'd love to hear it as always. So, um, you know, you can get hold of us at themidlifementors.com yeah. or info or James or Claire at themidlifementors.com. Uh, and uh, yeah. We'd love to hear from you, so I hope you enjoyed this. Yeah, and please, please share this with anyone that you feel would really benefit from it. And as always, if you're liking what you're hearing and you haven't given us a five-star rating, yeah, please, please do so, because it really helps us get our message out into the world more. And um, having said that, in a few weeks' time, we will be announcing what we have been risking for a really long time. <laughs> risking a lot on. Um, and we're launching that in a couple of weeks, so we can't wait, that, wait to share that with you. And we're sending you so much love. Big hugs. You've been listening to The Midlife Mentors with Claire and James Davis. We'd love to hear from you. So drop us a line at info at themidlifementors.com with any questions or topic suggestions. And make sure you join us on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can find us under The Midlife Mentors. Yeah.